This is my Ender 5 S1 with linear rails. I've used the 12mm rails. You can just see the um, carriage there underneath the head. You bolt the rails to the slots on the existing framework. Um, so on the sides for the Y axis and then across the gantry for the X axis. They just fit with T slot nuts and the cap head bolts in the top. You have to 3D print these replacement um, carriages for the ends of the X axis. It's actually running the Y axis. What this does is it holds onto the belt on the outside. I've used a adjustment screw for the tension across the x-axis. So the whole system now runs on the, the rails. So that's the, the end with the motor, stepper motor for the x-axis. You can see it's bolted there in four places onto the carriage for the rail. This end also holds the, the belt. Um, I've put an inspection hole in here just to so you can see the belt running around the motor spindle. And I've bolted the, the limit switch on my X axis to the side. There's that extension block on the Y-axis limit switch from the Hoon model. I've linked to that in the description. So that just raises it up slightly so that when you run all the way across the end it just touches that. For the X-axis I've put a slight notch onto my duct so that it touches the, the limit switch perfectly. Um, so there's a replacement fan duct for the part cooling. I've put this replacement cover over the hot end cooling. <coughs> I've done a filament change to get the colour effect on there. But um, that's the standard extruder, the stock board, and the stock part cooling fan. So that's just bolted onto the back plate. It goes through the new duct. The CR touch is standard, and is now bolted. Is now um, fitted with zero offset. From, from the head, which makes it a bit more accurate for the levelling. What I've done is I've designed my own pieces in the same um, style as previous examples I found. I've made my bottom piece here um, extend up to the top of the, the rail and then fitted the belt from the outside so it's quite easy to get to. This top section is in two parts. There's one I'm calling the, the top head which bolts down onto the base there and then this cap sits on top and is bolted in six places. The cap just holds the tension adjustment in place. It's on like a slider so that pulls the belt out. Um, this side is simpler. The bottom piece again bolted four places onto the carriage. Two bolts go down from the head into the base. Then you turn the motor around and that covers up the, the two holes and you bolt your motor on top. 
and then as I've shown before I've just bolted the the limit switch to the side the for the head. Um, this is made of well four main components. This part is the front bracket. This holds the extruder and it holds the hot end so the nozzle just hangs under there um, and it holds this fan on the front of the hot end as it did before so your extruder, your extruder motor the board is bolted to this back panel the back panel you basically bolt your board to it that holds the ribbon cable connection then you bolt your extra extractor fan uh, your extruder part cooling fan to that then you put two bolts up through the CR touch underneath into through the part cooling fan and into the base of this back, bra back bracket if you do that before you mount it all onto the, the front plate it's quite easy to do and then you pull all your wires so from underneath the wires that come from the board pull between two plastic fins on the base of my front plate so the wires for the the heater and the temperature sensor come back through there and back up to the board on the back as I say it's a stock cooling fan stock extruder stock hot end fan stock hot end this is with the fan cover removed so you can see the hot end bolts straight onto the front plate the front plate here is see, bolted through into the extruder so from the front and from the sides it's also from the sides just behind here as well so there's three bolts on both sides holding the extruder in place it's, it's the same distance as the original between there so there's no change on the cable on the uh, tube the belt on my x-axis is just pushed into two slots up from below before you mount the hot end this is more or less the same as the original part. You will have to put spacers under your bed to raise it up slightly. That's just because this new head sits a bit higher. These um, spacers were on the original design, I've just kept them the same. Because you've moved your BL touch or your CR touch you will have to edit your printer CFG and change your offsets you see there's a 0x offset now with a 46.7y offset um, your home position has changed and you'll also find you'll want to re-level your bed and change your, your Z offset just to correct for the new position. I've done some testing on mine and I found that the motors are okay up to 550. They start locking at about 600 so 550 is running fine on my machine. Acceleration I've set to 10,000 it seems to handle that. There's a lot less weight shoving about on the gantry. If you've got an input shaper, you will want to run an input shaper test. So mine's automatically run that and put these values in. Yours will be different. But the, um, the figures are very different to the standard head. And there's a lot less vibration. Just going to run a quick speed test macro. So you can see the kind of speeds I'm getting from this machine there.
So that was a speed test with velocity at 550 and acceleration at 10,000. Just to give you an idea, this is um, one of the Y-axis carriages that have taken off. Coming in at about 257 grams. This is the old X-axis carriage at 192 grams. This is the other Y axis at 283.5 grams. That's just the old back plate at 46.5 grams. Uh, the old fan cover at 47 grams. Bent belt tension at 9 grams. <laughs> so I'll work out the, um, the weights. The filament I've used for these parts. Um, they should be fairly accurate because there's not much support needed to print these. And what I'll do is I'll link to my um, download of these parts on printables and try to include the settings I've used to print them. You can see that this part and this part have been printed flat that way. This one's got a flat base, this one's got a flat base. The bottom parts I printed with this side flat to the bed so that there was minimum support just inside the holes really to stop the holes filling in for the screws. On this side it's more or less the same. Single piece on the top was printed flat. Bottom piece was printed with this side on the bed. The front bracket for the head does need support. Um, I printed it with this side flat on the bed. I also printed my fan cover this this side on the bed. This doesn't need support. I've um, fluted the, the screw holes so they'll print fine as overhangs. The back panel, the back plate is also need support because it's a bit of a strange shape. You print the duct for the part cooling fan with support but only support to the bed. So you print this, this side face down on the bed. It doesn't need a lot of support. So there it is. That's my complete replacement carriage system for the X and Y axis using linear rails.